Abraham experienced it and his name was changed. Sarah experienced it and she got laughter. Moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading. David experienced it and became God's beloved. Elijah experienced it and brought down fire. A savior has come to you. A healer has come to you. A deliverer has come to you. A redeemer has come to you. You will not miss your miracle. Now, it's your time. Experience the supernatural in this month's Global Crusade themed The Glorious Visitation of Christ happening live in Ghana. God is ready to move. Also featuring our ministers, church workers, and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest. The youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher heights with the Impact Academy. Join us from the 28th to 25th of April at Independence Square, Osu, Accra. The word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world. And everybody said, yeah. Father, we thank you for the Bible study tonight. Thank you for this wonderful place. And thank you for your people. Thank you for the joy of the Lord to come and serve you and to hear from you. Lord, we pray that tonight you open the pages of the scriptures to everyone. Yeah. Where the joy of fellowship will be in our hearts. And the excitement that we're coming before the Lord himself. And that your spirit will give us real understanding. We pray, Lord, it will be confirmed in Jesus' name. Keep us awake. Keep us excited. And help us to keep on loving your word in Jesus' name. We pray we'll not be hearers of the word alone. But we'll be doers of the word. We'll win somebody to the Lord. We will not be barren will be fruitful and your work will prosper in our hands in jesus name we pray for those who are coming for the first time that lord you touch their hearts you transform their lives and make this day an unforgettable day in their lives in jesus name bless them and bless their families and bless every one of your people here tonight in jesus mighty name we pray Give me another Lagos Island, amen there. Amen. God bless you, you can see that we're looking at John chapter 1. As we come to John chapter 1, we still want to continue listening to John the Baptist. Because the Lord sent him to be a witness. And what a great witness it was. It was a fruitful witness. A faithful witness. A focused witness, a person that witnessed to the Lord Jesus Christ, that is, he spoke about Jesus to people. And we're going to see some of the results of his witnessing today. We're looking at John chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 35. John chapter 1, verse 35. It says again, the next day, after John stood and two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Just stop there for a moment. You understand? John had said that before. But now he's saying that again. Look at verse 29. In verse 29 it says, The next day John sees Jesus coming unto him. And he says, Behold the Lamb of God. We take us away. Tell me. The sin of the world. He had borne witness to who Jesus Christ was. And was referring to him in the language of the Old Testament. In the language of the Old Covenant. You remember we studied that before. He looked at the Lamb from the time of Genesis. Here is the wood. Here is the fire. My father Abraham. Where is the Lamb for the sacrifice? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide himself. A lamb for the sacrifice. And God did provide, but this is the greatest lamb. 
I said, this is the greatest lamb. And then you remember Exodus, that each family will take a lamb. And then they will shed the blood and put the blood on the lintels of their houses. And God said, when I see the blood, I'll pass over you. That means judgment will pass over you. Perdition will pass over you. Eternal punishment will pass over you. And then it goes on and on and on. If you read Psalm 22, you will see from Psalm 22 in verse 1, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And it says, uh, They parted my garments, they pierced my hand, and they pierced my feet. You see those Old Testament people, they were looking forward to the time when the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, will be sacrificed. And eventually, Isaiah chapter 53, it says, he was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And then it says, he puts our sins upon him. And now we come to this in John chapter 1. And John said, behold the lamb. We'll be talking about him. Behold the lamb. Abraham spoke about him. Behold the lamb. And then he says, Moses spoke about him. Behold the lamb. Our king David spoke about him. Behold the lamb. One of the greatest prophets of the Old Testament, Isaiah, spoke about him. Behold the lamb. But you understand, the lamb in Genesis was the lamb for a man, one person. The lamb in Exodus was the lamb for a nation, but for each family. And the lamp has come to Isaiah is for the nation, for the nation of Israel. But the lamp here now, you see, is going on from the individual to the family and then to the nation. And here is the lamb of God who taketh away, tell me out loud, the scene of the world is now for the world. As you go to Revelation, you are going to find the lamp again. But that's the lamp for the whole universe. Because there's a book in the hand of the Almighty God. And it was a cry, an announcement in heaven, who is able to open the seals of the book. And there was nobody. And then John said, this John the beloved now. Here is John the Baptist. The other one, John, they tell me. The beloved. Here is John. And he said, I wept and I cried. And then one of the angels said, don't cry. Because somebody, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the lamb of God, he has prevailed to open the book. A lamb for an individual, for you and for me. All your sins he will take away. A lamb for the family. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved and thy family and thy house that means then you go from the individual you go to the family and then you go to the nation for the whole nation you know what Kafa says said you don't understand that it is necessary to sacrifice one person that one person will die for the whole nation is the lamb for the nation but here john is seeing everyone before him that's why jesus said of all that came before john is the greatest they saw it in a, myoti, a myopic understanding. They limited that land. Even the all those uh, prophets of the Old Testament, they are thinking of their nation, their nation, their nation. But here comes the greatest of them all. And it says, is the lamb for the whole world. That includes you. I say that includes you. And you understand, he had said that before in verse 29. And now he comes to verse 36. Look at verse 36. And looking upon Jesus as a watch, he says, tell me out loud. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. I I'm asking you a question. Why is John saying that again? He said, when I said it the other time, how many believed? And now he says, I'm going to repeat that again. Here we find John the Baptist continuing the ministry. You see people, once they preach once, nobody gets converted, they stop preaching. And once they announce it once, behold the lamp of God that takes away the sins of the old world. And nobody yielded, nobody responded, nobody believed. They just stopped. But John says, I'll continue. I'll continue. You will continue. And he kept on saying it until somebody heard, until somebody responded. There's a responsive heart here today. Amen. You've had it before. You didn't respond today. You are going to respond. Amen. It will take your sins away. It will take your guilt away. It will take eternal punishment away from every one of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 
he was saying it, he was announcing it, he was preaching it so that he could win somebody to Christ. And we're teaching this and we're revealing this so that by the grace of God, you will be fruitful. I'm looking at fruitful people there. You'll be fruitful in Jesus' name. But you know, John, it's not everybody that accepted. It's not everybody that believed. But he kept on saying it until he had followers. Until he had disciples. Look at verse 37. And the two disciples heard him and they followed Jesus. The two disciples heard him. Understand? They were there last week. They were there the other time. When John said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the whole world. And they didn't understand. They were not preached. They were not moved. They were not touched. And they were just there. And here John continued the ministry. That's why you will continue. As he continued, he said it again. And these two disciples, they responded. The point is that whatever God has given you to do, Keep on doing it. Keep at it. Keep at it. Keep at it. One day, it will be a fruit. Yeah. You will be a fruit in Jesus' name. He did not allow the religious people. You see, they were religious people. They didn't accept what he said about Jesus Christ. And let's look at that. Look at Matthew chapter 21. And see that there were people that even opposed him and didn't accept what he said. But all the same, the secret of success is that even though there are people that didn't believe, they he kept on, he kept on, he kept on, like you will keep on. Like you will not give up. And your life will be fruitful. Matthew chapter 21, I'm reading from verse 23. It says in verse 23, And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him as he was teaching. And he said, By what authority doest thou these things? Who gave thee this authority? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also ask you one thing, what which if ye tell me, then I in likewise will tell you by what authority I do these things. Listen to this. The baptism of John. Whence was it? From heaven? Of men. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say unto us, Tell me. Why did he not then believe him? You see, John, even though he had been pointing out the Lamb of God, not everybody accepted, not everybody believed, but that did not hurt him. That did not hush him. That did not hinder him. There are people that are easily hindered, easily halted, easily hushed. Once they rise up, maybe in the bus, maybe at the bus stop, maybe in the train station, maybe anywhere, and they announce Jesus Christ is the Lamb of God. He takes away the sins of the world. He says, by his blood, he will cleanse us and he will cleanse all the rubbish and the debris and the defilement away from our lives. And through him and through him alone, we'll be saved. If people say, uh-huh, I hear you, I don't accept, I don't believe, they stop. You will not stop. I said you will not stop. Look at verse 32. In verse 32, here it says, in verse 32, For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and uh, say that aloud, and ye believed him not, but the publicans and the harlots believed him, and ye, when ye had seen it, repented not afterward, uh, that ye might believe him. But the joy of our heart is that even though these uh, people did not believe, there were those who believed. I believe. I believe. I'm a believer. I believe. Whatever others do, whatever others do not do, however they respond, however they do not respond, I believe the word of God. Say it for yourself. Uh, let, let, let's think about that word continue, continue, because I want to give you the key, the key that makes a life successful. 
The key that makes a ministry successful. And that's the key we learn from John. That even though he said it before and nobody accepted and nobody responded, he said it again like you'll say it again. You will do it again. You will preach it again. You will minister again. You will sing again. You will counsel again. You will help people again. The secret is never, never give up. I will not give up. To continue, that's the secret of success, whether it's in a family, in a profession, or in our Christian lives, or in our ministry. Continue, continue. That is the secret. We're looking at Nehemiah chapter 5. Nehemiah chapter 5. I'm reading here from verse 16. Nehemiah chapter 5. And we're reading from verse 16. And uh, the word we're looking for is the word continue. And this will be reaching upon the tables of our hearts in Jesus' name. Look at verse 16, chapter, chapter 5, verse 16. It says, Yea. Also, I continued in the work of this wall. That is, there were, there, was, there were Tobias and Shambhalat and, you know, all the people that opposed him. He said, they opposed. He said, they fought it. He said, they even ridiculed us. And they even belittled us. And they looked down on us. But I continued whatever the people say whatever the people do whatever the people may act against you that word will be your life you will continue i'm reading from luke chapter 22 luke chapter 22 we're looking at verse 28 Luke chapter 22, verse 28. Ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations, in my trials, in my difficulties. With all those Pharisees and all those Sadducees not believing, ye are they which have continued with me. I will be of that number. I will continue. I said I will continue. I will not give up. You will not give up. We're looking at Luke, John chapter, uh, chapter 8, verse 31. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. It's uh, easy to have a great start, an exciting beginning, that you say, yes, I'm going to follow on. It is to continue, to continue. And Jesus said, when you continue in my words, then will you be my disciples in Acts of the Apostles chapter 14. Acts chapter 14, we're looking at verse 22. Acts chapter 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Continue in the faith. You preach before and then it appears the prayer was not answered. What do you do again? You pray again. You continue. And it, if it appears, I've gone there before. I've tried it before. I even believed that promise of God before, but the thing did not work. What do you do? You do give up. You continue. You continue in the faith. You keep on knocking at the gate of heaven. And I'm telling you, yours might be tonight that the gate will be open. Acts chapter 26. Acts chapter 26. We're reading from verse 22. Acts chapter 26. We're looking at verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue until this day. I continue until this day. I said I continue until this day. You know success is near you there. Do you know fruitfulness is near you there? You know that victory is near you there. You see, there are people that give up too soon. You know, I tried that before. I testified before. I prayed before. I announced it before. I proclaimed it before. And nothing happened. Nobody responded. Do it again. I said, do it again. I don't see failure in your life. I don't see defeat in your life. I don't see penury in your life. I see, I see the continuity and I see the progress because if you will continue like John continued, you'll make a success of that ministry in Jesus' name. It says, 
having therefore obtained help of God, help is coming on the way. I continue unto this day witnessing, you see that you will witness, witnessing to both to small and great, saying none other things than what, than those things that Moses and the prophets did say shall come, that Christ shall suffer and that he should be the force that shall rise from the dead and that he'll show light unto the people and to the Gentiles. He said, I kept on announcing it. Look at Philippians chapter 1 verse 25. Philippians chapter 1 verse 25. By now, that word is written in your mind. It's written in your heart. It's written in your brain and it's written in your decision. You're a decision maker and you say, I've made the decision, I will continue. In Philippians chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 25. Philippians chapter 1 verse 25, and having this confidence, I know that I shall abide and continue with you all. I shall abide. And continue with you all for the fortress or and joy of faith. We're looking at uh, Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four, and we're reading from verse uh, chapter uh, chapter three, rather. Second Timothy chapter three, and we're reading from verse thirteen and verse fourteen. But evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving. And being deceived, you see there are people, they bother themselves about the conditions of things around them. The place where you're living, you know, there is a place of darkness there, and that house is a shrine, and that one is this, and that one is that. They're bothered about the evil men. They wax worse and worse. Oh, there are people, they're telling us stories. When I came to this area, I've been living in this area, you know, for about, that's what they say, about uh, 10 years now. When I came newly, everything was all right. You could move here, you could move there, and you could stand up anywhere, and you could preach the word of God, and nobody will confront you. But things are getting worse every day, and things are getting from bad to worse, and things are terrible right now that you maybe you cannot even go out of your house but look at look at that look at verse 13 again but evil men and seducers they shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived verse 14 but tell me out loud that door you locked and said i never come out because things are becoming worse open that door and come out that place you said, I cannot go there again. I cannot do that again because of this and because of this and because of, after all, they're not even responding. Open your door, come out and be a man of faith and be a woman of faith and you will succeed in ministry in Jesus' name. Amen. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Thank God John continued. And you'll see the effect now as John continues. I'm coming back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm grateful to God that he continued. And I'm grateful to God that you are here tonight. And this is the key in your life. You will continue. Discouragement, get out of your heart. And all that despondency and despair, get out of your heart. And locking up yourself and holding yourself and, uh, you know, as if uh, you're going to be in a dungeon hole right there. The key is there. Your door is open. Yeah. Your prisons are open. Yeah. And all those strongholds, I open them in Jesus' name. Yeah. Come out in the light and shine. Yeah. And then the things you did before that they say you cannot do it again, do it again and succeed. Yeah. Do it again and progress. Come back now to John. Come back to John. I'm reading from chapter 1, verse 35. It says again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he says, Behold the Lamb of God. Listen to this. And two of his disciples heard him and they followed Jesus. Two of his disciples heard him and they followed, they followed who? Then Jesus turned and saw them following and says unto them, What's, what seek ye? They said unto him, Rabbi, 
which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He says unto them, Come and see. And they came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. This is important. This is important. Look at verse 40. And one of the two which heard John speak and followed him was was who? Andrew. I said was who? Andrew. Andrew. Simon Peter's brother. Look at verse 41. He first findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted, the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah, thou shalt be called Sivas, for which is being interpreted a stone. Look up here for a moment. You see this Andrew, he became one of the twelve disciples of Jesus Christ. And then he moved from being a disciple to becoming an apostle. And as you go to Revelation chapter 21, chapter 22, the gates of the new Jerusalem, the names of the 12 apostles, apart from Judas, will be there. And then Andrew will be there with his name reaching on one of the gates. Just because, just because John continued. Just because, even though I said it before, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world, nobody accepted, nobody believed, nobody rose up. I'll say it again, you'll say it again. And then this Andrew brought Peter, Simon Peter, unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Just because, notice where it started, that John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. And eventually that brought Andrew, and Andrew brought Peter. And Peter became the preacher that preached on the day of Pentecost. How many people came to the Lord? 3,000. You never can tell. You never can tell the result of your ministry and the result of what you're doing. Don't get discouraged. Keep on doing it. I say keep on doing it and the fruit will come out later in Jesus' name. Tonight's study is titled The Conversion of Christ's First Disciples. The Conversion of Christ's First Disciples. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the conversion of seeking disciples. Those who are seeking, they're seeking, they're seeking. If there's a seeker there today, you'll get something. Something that will turn your life around. And something that will bring you a new creature, a new life, a new minister, a new man with a new power inside in your life in Jesus' name. Point number one, the conversion of seeking disciples. Point number two. The conviction of a sincere doubter. The conviction of a sincere doubter. As we read through, you are going to find out that Philip told Nathaniel and said, We have found him. We have found him, the Messiah. We have found him, the Christ. We have found him, the King of Israel. We have found him, the Son of God. And then Nathaniel said, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? You know, that's where some people will stop. I told him he will not accept. I told him, I told him sincerely. I told him from my heart, but he doubted. Say it again. Then the Philip said, come and see. And he came and he never went back anymore. Your compass will not go back anymore in Jesus' name. The conviction of a sincere doubter. Point number three, the consequence of steadfast devotedness. The consequence of steadfast devotedness. Those who came in this chapter one, they were devoted to the Lord. You see, there are people, they do not back their decision with devotedness. They come, they say, I've decided to follow Jesus like we sang in one of the choruses. I've decided I'm following Christ. I'm for, he's my Savior. He's my Lord. And then after one week, we can't see them again. After one month, we can't see them again. But you find these people, they were steadfast, devoted people. And you'll be like that in Jesus' name. We're looking at point number one. The conversion of, tell me, 
seeking disciples. We're coming back to John chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm reading here from verse 35 again. Again, the next day after John stood and two of his disciples. Look at what follows then. Then he says, look and looking upon Jesus as he walked. He says, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him, and they followed Jesus. The two disciples heard him, and they followed Jesus. The question is this. Did John have only two disciples? Very important. We need to ask that question. Because it says, Two of the disciples of John had what he said, Behold the Lamb. And they followed. He had more than two disciples. And because as you look at uh, the word of God, you find that he had many other disciples, but only two. Only two. These two, they followed uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, let's look at uh, um, the, some of the references that show us that he had other disciples. We're looking at Matthew chapter 9 and verse 14. Matthew Chapter 9, and I'm reading here from verse, tell me the verse. Verse 14. It says in verse 14, Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast ought, but the disciples fast not? From the language you can tell, they had not followed Jesus Christ. They remained as disciples of John. Because they said, Why is it? We disciples of John we fast often. And your disciples, which means they separated themselves from the disciples of Christ and your disciples fast not. I want to show you something very important. You see, there are people, they are wedded to the old order. They are wedded to the old religion. They are wedded to the old sin. And they are wedded to the, to say, our, our church is great. Maybe. Our denomination is wonderful. Maybe. They say, our master, our teacher, Rabbi John the Baptist, was uh, even prophesied before he was born. Maybe that all those things are true. But now Christ has come. And John himself is saying, look at him. Look at him. Behold the Lamb. And only two of those disciples followed. And all the rest, they waited behind. We're looking at uh, Luke chapter 11. Luke chapter 11. And I'm reading here from verse 1. Luke chapter 11, we're reading from verse 1. Just to tell you, just to show you that John the Baptist had other disciples that did not follow. They didn't follow his announcement and they didn't respond to what he said. Behold the Lamb of God. Luke chapter 11 verse what? Verse 1. It says, and it came to pass that as he was, as he was praying in a certain place, when he sees one of his disciples, disciples of Christ, says unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. Tell me. As John also taught his disciples. There were disciples that remained behind. And John said, I am not the Christ. I am not the Messiah. I am not the Savior. I am the voice crying in the wilderness. And to show you him that is to come. He is coming after me. He is mightier than I. He is greater than I. The Spirit comes upon him and the Father. Heavenly Father who sent me said, Upon who you see the Spirit coming and abiding, that is the Son of God. All these his disciples, they have that. That was pointing out Jesus. It was revealing Jesus to them. But you know what? They just stayed in that low-level religion. And they stayed in that camp. And they didn't follow after Jesus Christ. What's the consequence of that? Let me show you Acts of the Apostles. I'm reading from chapter 18. Acts of the Apostles. We're looking at chapter 18. So, as you hear the word of God, we're not saying, it's not everybody here that will say that you've never been to another church, you've never been to another assembly, you've never been to any other fellowship, but when you see something higher, when you see something greater, when you see a revelation that the Lord is bringing to you, and the same John that you have been following is now telling you, behold the Lamb, behold 
behold the Lamb of God. And two of those disciples are responding. And then you're sitting back. Why are you sitting back? Why don't you rise up? Because something greater is waiting for you. Something bigger is waiting for you. Look at Acts chapter 18. I'm reading here from verse 24. Acts chapter 18 verse 24. And a certain Jew named Apollos born at Alexandria, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures came to Ephesus. Listen to this. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord, being fervent in the spirit, he spake and he taught diligently at the things of the Lord. Tell me the rest. <laughs> knowing only, knowing only, knowing only the baptism of John. Look at that. Until John died, all he listened to was John. And then after John died and Christ came on, he, he must have heard about Jesus. He must have heard about his miracles. He must have known that these other disciples, when they heard from our master John, they left and they followed Jesus. He remained with John. Even though he was fervent, even though it appeared in new the scriptures, but he was limited because he didn't come with these that had John and said, Behold the Lamb. Look at uh, verse uh, 26. It says, And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. Whom when Aquila and Priscilla heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of God more perfectly. And when he was disposed to pass into Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. Who, when he was come, he helped them much, which had believed through grace and he mightily convinced the jews and that publicly showing that from the by the scriptures that jesus was a christ at the late hour think about this acts of the apostles chapter 2 at ghana uh, when the people received the baptism of the holy ghost and power he was not there the, the disciple of john and then now silver and gold have i known in the name of jesus christ of nazareth rise up and walk the man, Apollos, he was not there. And you come to chapter 5 and chapter 6, and even many of the people who were priests, they obeyed the faith. The man was not there. He was holding on to John, John the Baptist, John the Baptist, John the Baptist. That's all he knew. And now the time came, even though he spoke, Aquila and Priscilla could see that this man is limited. He's fervent, but he's limited. He appears knowledgeable, but he's limited because he did not respond to that great message. Behold, the Lamb of God. A look at uh, chapter 19. Chapter 19 verse 1. And it came to pass that while Apollos was, was at Corinth and Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples and said unto them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Paul the apostle saw these believers now. They were believers but you know again they were so limited. And Paul looked at them. He saw their faith fellowship. He saw the, their level of understanding and he saw their level of power. He saw their uh, kind, kind of uh, incap they were incapacitated and he said, have you heard of the Holy Ghost? Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? Look at the answer. They said unto him, we have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said unto John the Baptist. Can you imagine that there were disciples of John that have not heard that there's any Holy Ghost? They didn't know about Calvary. They didn't know about what Christ had done. Even the announcement that John made, Behold the Lamb of God. They were ignorant of that. Number one, they were ignorant of Christ's early earthly ministry. Opening the eyes of the blind, making the lame to rise up and walk. And then, make even the insane, he cured them. And then he forgave sins, he gave them salvation all by grace. These people did not know about all that. You have never heard of the Holy Ghost? Unto what then were you baptized? Were baptized unto John the Baptist. Number two, they had never seen the benefit of the Lamb at Calvary. What the blood of Jesus does, it forgives us. 
He cleanses us. He purifies us. He purges us. He sanctifies and he makes our heart holy. They had not known that because all they knew was John. All they knew was John. And then three, Christ's um, priestly prayer in John chapter 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. They were ignorant of that. We've never heard about that. Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high, because not many days since you'll be baptized in the Holy Ghost, you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. Have you ever heard that? No, we have never heard that. Until what were you baptized then? Did you hear about baptizing in the name of the Father? And tell me, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. We never had that. How are you baptized? We are baptized unto John. John the Baptist. The point is this. As John fulfilled his ministry, and he was factual, he was truthful, and he did not hide the truth from anybody. He said, behold the Lamb. There were people that will not hear. I pray you will not be like that. You see, they, they lost or they missed the fellowship of the apostles. They missed the baptism and the power of the Holy Ghost. And they missed the full revelation of Christ, what he had given to them. But thank God for these people. I pray you'll be like one of these two people. Look at John. Look at John. I'm reading from chapter 1. John chapter 1. I'm reading now from verse John chapter 1. Reading from verse 37. And the two disciples heard him and they followed Jesus. That's the result of good preaching. That's the result of good announcement. That's the result of knowing, knowing the Lamb, the Lamb of God. Whatever you hear, if you don't get up and turn around and repent and follow Christ, you have not heard anything. It is when it has the effect on you and you know that I can get something better, something richer, something greater from Christ. And whatever I got from John before, whatever I got from the Baptist before, whatever I got from any other place, before I'm hearing now about Jesus Christ and Jesus only is a message is a savior, is a sanctifier is a healer, is a baptizer and is a coming king what I'm hearing now, I'm going to act on it, your life will never be the same again I said your life will never be the same again. Hey, look at ever, look at verse uh, 38. And Jesus turned and he saw them following. He'll see you following. I said he'll see you following. Somebody is going to follow in a closer way. Somebody is going to follow in a more exciting way. And the power of the Lord will walk in your life in Jesus' name. And he said unto him, Rabbi, which is to say, being interpreted, Master, where dwellest thou? He says unto them, come and see. The Lord is inviting you, come and see. You'll see salvation. Come and see, you'll see holiness. Come and see, you'll see power. Come and see, you will see anointing. Come and see, you'll see a greater life. A greater future will open to you because Christ is inviting you. Come and see. And then it says, they came and they saw where he dwelt and abode with him that day. For it was about the tenth hour. And one of the two, the which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's uh, brother. Then in verse 41, he first findeth his own brother. Go and find your brother. I said go and find your brother. Or your sister. Or your mother. Or your father. Or your siblings. Or your co-worker. Or your schoolmate. Go and find somebody. You cannot hide the sin. It is blessing your life. It will bless their lives. And it is enriching you spiritually. It will enrich them also in Jesus name. You know, you can never tell that what that person will become. What he will become here on earth. What will become when we get to heaven. And then you can never tell the people that will come to the Lord through him. And then when they come to him and say, oh, thank God for your life, Peter. He said, don't thank me. Look at that quiet man there, Andrew. He was the one that brought me to Jesus. Where would I be if there were no Andrew? Where would you be if there were no Andrew? Somebody 
must know that you have received Jesus Christ and you are touching their lives. I said you are touching their lives. And it doesn't, it doesn't take much effort. It doesn't take much wisdom. It doesn't take too many scriptures. I don't know the Bible. Look at this. Look at this. All he said, he, he first found his own brother Simon and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. That's all he said. We have found the Messiah. I've experienced him. I heard him. He looked at me. I have peace in my heart. I've discovered the prince of peace. He took away my guilt and my condemnation. And we have found him. Why don't you come? Why don't you come? And before Peter could say anything at all, he held his hand and he brought him to Jesus. Somebody brought you. I said somebody brought you. You bring another person. You will not be barren. You will be fruitful. Look at verse 42. And he brought him to Jesus. And when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. Look at that. He had never met him before. And he said, Thou art Simon, the son of Jonah. If you are a student of the Bible, you understand what is called the word of knowledge. The word of knowledge by the spirit is the gift of the spirit and this gift of the spirit was in the lord jesus christ he saw him like this he said your name is simon and your father is jonah and then he now said another thing it says thou shall be called savers this is the word of faith now the power to transform his life he said you are not going to be the same as you have been as you are meeting the lord afresh tonight in a new way tonight you'll not be the same way you came in jesus name you were timid he will energize you he will empower you it will encourage you. And the power, the might of the Lord will enter, penetrate into your life in Jesus' name. And then it says in the funded for the following, Jesus will go forth into Galilee and find a Philip. And he saith unto him, follow me. He saith unto him, follow me. And look up here for a moment. Can, can you see that there are different ways people come to the Lord? In the case of Andrew and the other disciple, they heard from John. Behold the Lamb of God. And through that word, that became a bridge on which they could step and come to Jesus. In the case of Simon, it wasn't John the Baptist. It was Andrew that found him. You are my brother. You believe me. This one is wonderful. Have I told you any lie before? I'm telling you this. I met him. That's it. That Jesus of Nazareth. I met him. The one that they wrote about in the Old Testament. Do you know that he has come? Do you know he's there now? Let's go to him. That's how Peter came to know the Lord. Look at Philip. Philip was not invited by this or by that. Jesus himself found him and said, follow me. Just like Matthew, direct, follow me. And just like Paul the apostle, the Lord appeared to him and he came to know the Lord. The point is this, you are not uh, thinking that everybody will know the Lord like you have known the Lord. In fact, look at the next verse here. Verse 44. Now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael and said unto him, tell me, Look up, hold on, hold on. If Philip did not say, well, that's Nathaniel, God will speak to him. Nobody, nobody spoke to me. And nobody called me. Jesus Christ himself called me. And since Jesus called me directly, I'm waiting. I won't tell anybody Jesus will call them directly. No, it doesn't work like that. There are different methods for different people to come to the Lord. And so Philip knew that. And Philip said, I'll do my part like you will do your part. I'll do my duty like you'll do your duty. You will tell that person who has not known Philip find it, uh, Philip find it Nathaniel and saith unto him, We found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. 
and eventually he brought him to the Lord. He had his doubts. He has his doubts. And that, that leads to also point number two now, the conviction of a sincere doubter. The conviction of a sincere doubter. We're coming to chapter one, and I'm reading from verse 45 all through to verse 49. All throughout of verse 49, keep your eyes in your Bible. It says, Philip findeth Nathaniel and says unto him, We have found him. I pray you'll find him. And he will find you. Of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathaniel said unto him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Don't let that, that shut you up. Don't allow that to make you fold, uh, fold up and then coil back into your shell. This world is an unbelieving world. These people, they never believe anything. And I don't want them to take away from me what I already have. I have my conviction already. I know that Jesus Christ is the Messiah and Jesus Christ is the Christ. See what has happened now. I just told him now and I was so happy. I was so excited. And I told him that we have found him of whom Moses wrote about Jesus of Nazareth. And look at his answer. This one, I'm not going to allow him to dampen my courage or my, or my excitement or what Whatever, I leave him alone. Don't leave them alone. A change will come. I said, A change will come. And look at this. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Tell me. I can't hear you. Come and see. Don't argue. Tell them, Come and see. If they come, they'll see something. Something that will change their lives. Something that will transform them. You will be glad God used you as an instrument to bring that Nathaniel unto the Lord. Because from today, the Lord will use you more than ever before. If you are a timid person, shy person, an introvert, from today, you'll come out of your shell. And then you will tell the people you see, Jesus is the Savior. He has saved me as he saved you. Then tell them, and then Jesus will save them too, and their lives will become different in Jesus' name. Come and see. I said, come and see. I said, come and see. Verse 47, Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him, and he says to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. Behold, an Israelite indeed, in whom is no girl. How startled Nathaniel must have been. How surprised Nathaniel must have been. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And then he was now coming. And as Jesus looked at him, Philip had not even introduced him. And he said, I see you there. Behold, an Israelite indeed, he was a sincere man. He was an honest man. He was a sincere doubter. Look at this in verse, uh, in verse 48. Nathaniel says unto him, Whence knowest thou me? How do you know me? Where have you met me before? I've never met you before. I even doubted. I said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Look at the answer. Jesus answered and said unto him, before Philip called thee, when thou was under the fig tree, I saw thee. What of knowledge? I know where you are. I know your name. I know where you have been. Before Philip came to see you, what Philip does not know about you, I know everything about you. Nathaniel answered and said unto him, tell me, Rabbi, tell me what follows. Thou art the son of God. Tell me what follows. Thou art the king of Israel. Did he even tell him all this? He himself now, as he saw Jesus Christ, you'll see Jesus tonight. He'll be your savior. He'll forgive your sin. And as you see Jesus like this, new light will come in your soul. A new understanding will come in your spirit. And then he said, uh, you know, you are the son of God. And you are the king 
of Israel. He was a sincere doubter. And all his doubt, everything went away. You know something? A transformation took place in his life. Transformation in what sense? He became a cleansed, clean convert. From this time, he didn't go back anymore. From tonight, he'll cleanse your heart. He'll clean you up. You'll forget all the dirty things, even your guilt, your condemnation. He'll take everything away in Jesus' name. Number two, he became a consecrated Christian. This man, Nathaniel, he said, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. I surrender my life unto you. He became a devoted disciple. A devoted disciple. Uh, which chapter of John are we studying tonight? Tell me out loud. Uh, let's look at what's the last chapter of John. What's the chapter called? Okay, that one you open the last chapter before you discover. Uh, John chapter, last chapter, you are going to, I'm waiting for you. Chapter 21, look at verse 2 here. We're reading from John chapter 1 and we met this Nathaniel. And then we come to the last chapter of John and we're looking at Nathaniel. Look at this and verse 2. And there were together Simon Peter, we met him before, and Thomas uh, called Didymus, we, we heard of him before. And what's the next name here? Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee. Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee. From chapter 1. From that time he came to know the Lord. He just kept on. I will keep on. I said I will keep on. In chapter 2, it was there. Chapter 3, it was there. He said, this is the king of Israel. I surrender my life unto him. I give myself unto him unreservedly. He became a faithful follower. Until the end. Until the end. And I pray that commitment will come to your life tonight in Jesus' name. He became a witnessing worshiper. He was going to worship the Lord. And because this is the son of God, that's what he realized. And then he called him the king of Israel. Also, he became a sanctified saint because he was there when Jesus prayed for them. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He became a submissive servant. You see, when you meet the Lord, you will never be the same again. And he met the Lord and he wasn't ever the same again. He continued with the Lord. I will continue with the Lord. We're coming to point number three now. The consequence of steadfast devotedness. The consequence of steadfast devotedness. We're coming to chapter one. Chapter 1, we're reading from verse 50. Chapter 1, verse 50, Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? Just because I told you that, just that point of information, just that bit of information that I told you now, that I saw you under that fig tree, you are believed. I pray that with all that you are hearing, you will believe. Yeah. And then look at what Jesus said. Thou shalt see greater things than this. Can you say that with me? Thou shalt see greater things than this. Can you say that again? Thou shalt see greater things than these. Make it personal. I will see. I will see greater things than these. Look at the consequence of steadfast devotedness. He came to Christ. And he wasn't now leaning on Philip. Saying, okay Philip, you told me that. Tell me more. He said, by myself I have discovered. You'll find a personal discovery. As you come to Christ, I know you have come before. I know you are a child of God. But you are going to come again. I said you'll come again. Because from today, you will see greater things than these in Jesus' name. Amen. What does that mean? As he told him, that you'll see greater things than these. Look at chapter 2. Look at what he saw. Look at it from verse 5. And his mother said unto the servants, Whatsoever he says unto you, do it. 
And there were set there six water pots after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three fucking sapphires. And Jesus says unto them, Fill the water pots with, with water, and defilch them to the brim. And he says unto them, Draw out now and bear to the governor of the feast. And they bear it when the ruler of the feast tasted the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was. But the servants which drew the water knew the governor of the feast called the bridegroom. And he says unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine. When men have well drunk, then that which is worse, but thou hast kept the good wine until now. Water was turned to wine. Creative power. Nathaniel said, I see that. I see that. That's part of the promise. You didn't, this one is greater than what he was talking about because all that uh, Jesus said is that I saw you under the fig tree and I know what you were doing before Philip called you. But this one now, this one is different. This had never happened from the creation of the world. Before the, from the creation of the world, this has never happened. It never happened in the Old Testament. Never happened until Jesus came. Only at this time. And Nathaniel said, no wonder he said, I will see greater things than these. You will see greater things. We're looking at John chapter 4. John chapter 4, you'll see this one. This one will happen in your family. Look at chapter 4, verse 49. And the noble man saith unto him, Sir, come down here before my child die. And Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. Hold on, hold on. And if uh, anything like this was going to happen, Elijah, Elisha will have to pray and pray and pray for that child that is now sick. Elijah will pray for that fire to come down. But here now, somebody said, please come down quickly, come down quickly because my child is about to die. And Jesus didn't have to pray and pray like Elijah, like Elisha, like Moses. He just said, go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him and he went his way and as he was now going down the servants met him and told him saying thy son liveth then he inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend and they said unto him yesterday at the seventh hour at the seventh hour this is your hour at the seventh hour, at the seventh hour, the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour. In that which Jesus said, the son liveth, himself believed, and his whole house. And Nathaniel said, I see another thing. Because that's what Jesus told him. He said, you call me the king of Israel and you call me the son of God. Keep on following me. From now on, you will see greater things. And then he saw what happened in chapter 2. He saw what happened in chapter 4. He saw, look at chapter 5. In chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 5. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity 30 and 8 years. You've never seen this before. When Jesus saw him lying and knew that he had been now a long time in that place, he said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another stepped down before me. And Jesus saith unto him, Tell me out loud. Rise up, it was rise, take up thy bed and walk. Verse 9, everybody one, two, three, go. And immediately, and immediately, and immediately, your miracle is coming immediately. You see, you see, Nathaniel, Nathaniel was looking at everything. Jesus said, you recognize me as the king of the Jews and you recognize me as the son of God. Keep on following, keep on following. From now on, you will see greater things than these. And he was surprised. Every chapter surprised him. Every day surprised him. As you are coming to the Lord today and you know the Lord more intimately for the rest of your life, every day there will be a surprising miracle. 
surprising power in your life in Jesus' name. And immediately the man was made whole and he took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. I'm reading from chapter 6, verse 19. Chapter 6, we're looking at verse 19. It says, So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus. They see Jesus. What was he doing? I can't hear you. Have you seen that before? Did you hear that in the Old Testament? Did you hear that from anybody before? Did you hear that from John the Baptist? Come, come, come and see, come and see. As you follow the Lord, Jesus told him, I told you now that I knew you where you were coming from. I told you I saw you under the fig tree. Come, come, you will see greater things than this. All of a sudden, Nathaniel with the other disciples, as they saw the Lord Jesus Christ walking on the sea, drawing near unto the sheep, and they were afraid. And he says unto them, It is I, be not afraid. And they were they then they willing received him into the sheep, and immediately, and immediately the sheep was at the land whither. They went, they will become in your soul. Yeah. Come in your spirit. Yeah. Look at chapter 8. I'm skipping some chapters. There are some wonderful things everywhere, but we can't read everything. Chapter 8, I'm reading from verse 56. Chapter 8, verse 56. Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Are thou yet 50 years old? As thou seen Abraham, and Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. Look at verse 59. Nathaniel saw something now. Verse 59. Look at this. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself. Understand? He was in their midst. Of a congregation like this, and then he said what he said because they were questioning one another. Are you as old? Have you seen Abraham? Yes, I've seen him. He rejoiced to see my days, and he was glad. Ah, what do you make of yourself? They were seen. Didn't they see him? I said, didn't they see him? They saw him. Then he said, before Abraham was, tell me. I am. Ah, that's blasphemy. That's to them. Then they took up stones. Look at this. They took up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and he went out of the temple. Tell me what follows. Going through the midst of them, they held the stones in their hands. Will stone him, will kill him. And Jesus looked at them like this, and in the midst of them he passed, and then he went his way and passed by. This is the Son of God. This is the one in authority. He'll give you protection, he'll give you preservation. That's what he told you. He said, you will see greater things than these. I'm praying for you. That's from now on. You will see Jesus in his beauty. And Jesus in his glory. Coming to Christ. Coming to Christ will bring the supernatural into your life. Look, look at chapter 9. Look at chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 1. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from birth. Look at verse 7. And he said unto him, Go wash in the pool side Loam, which is being interpreted saint. He went his way, therefore, and washed and came see him. You will see. Yeah. That bad eyesight will become better. Yeah. Those blind eyes will be open. Yeah. Because you will see greater things than this. Yeah. Barrenness will vanish away. Yeah. All the sorrow of your life will vanish away. Yeah. Because he comes with power. And he says, just follow me and you will see greater things than this. Chapter 11, I'm reading from verse 39. Chapter 11, verse 39. Jesus said, take care away the stone. Whatever stone is blocking you and blocking your blessing tonight, take away that stone. 
Master, the sister of him that was dead says unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he had been dead four days. And Jesus saith unto her, Said not I unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, believers are here in the house tonight. Thou shalt, thou shalt see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me. How long? How often? Always. But because of the people which stand here, said I it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, everybody, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. That thing dead in your body will come forth. That dead brain will come forth. That dead business will come forth. That dead child, the, the one will come forth. He that was dead came forth, bound hand and feet with grave clothes, and his face was bound, a bound with a napkin. And Jesus says unto them, Lucy, him, let him go. Where are you? Lucy, him, let him go. All your shackles are taken away. All the bondages are taken away. Lucy, him, and let him go. And Nathaniel said, I saw. And today I say, I see. I said, I see. You follow the Lord and you will see greater things than these in Jesus' name. You will see as you follow greater spiritual perception. As you follow, you'll see surprising creative power. As you follow, you will see supernatural manifestations. You will see greater Christian experiences. You'll see divine demonstrations. You'll see greater personal possibilities. Protection and preservation. The fulfillment of the promises of God. New things every day. New power every day. New possession every day. Because of steadfast devotedness. I say unto you, come to him. I say to you, call on him. I tell you, confess to him. And I tell you, cleave unto him. Continue with him. Consecrate yourself unto him. And you are going to conquer through him. Yeah. Come, continue, conquer. Yeah. Look at all these people here. They came, they continued, they conquered. The key is now in your hand. Where are you? I said, where are you? Get up and get the key. You come. You continue. You conquer. I will not go back. I said I will not go back. I said I will not go back. Open your mouth and tell the Lord. It's time for you to begin to see greater things than these. Greater things than these. Greater things than these. Come and discover. Come. There's revelation in Christ. Power in Christ. Authority in Christ. Don't doubt. Don't doubt. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. Come and see. And when you come, cleave to him. Continue with him. Don't leave him. He will not leave you. And you will see greater things than these.